Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. Today I hope to be shooting one of my very favorite Old West firearms, a Colt Burgess lever action rifle. Now, if you watch this channel much, you may have seen me shoot a, a Burgess before. And if you're not familiar with them, well, that's understandable too. They've only made them for a very short time. Colt produced these from late 1883 to early 1885, only a period of about 16 months. They made about 6,400 of them. So a very small production run before they discontinued this Burgess lever action and started making the Colt Lightning slide action rifles. Now, of course, you may have heard the story about um, Colt and Winchester's gentleman agreement where Colt agreed not to produce any more lever action rifles if Winchester agreed not to go into production of uh, revolvers that they had we're working on and perfecting. Now, if you're interested in, in more about that, last year I got the great pleasure to handle those those Winchester uh, prototype revolvers over at the Cody Firearms Museum, and I made an episode of that, so go back and check that out if you're interested. Now, the reason we need to work on this one, there's a, a problem with this one that's very common with the Burgess, and that's that while it will extract, it won't eject. And even the ones that do eject are, are pretty weak. So we can see here, now all Burgess were made in 4440 or 44 WCF. You see, when we, when we try to extract and eject, it just flips up and, and stays in the, uh, in the top of the receiver. It doesn't, doesn't kick out all the way. Now, if we, we've got another Burgess here, and this one's a dandy. Most Burgess are in really rough shape with very little finish. The ones that were out there got used. Unfortunately, this one, somebody at some point in time wanted a Burgess trapper, so they, they bobbed the barrel off at 16 inches. But it actually is one of the few that does eject properly. And even that one, you can see, it doesn't really fling it out there, but it does eject. But I would say at least half of the Burgess I deal with don't eject properly. Now here's a stripped Colt Burgess bolt. And the first thing you'll probably notice is that the firing pin hole is huge here. And there's a reason for that. In a Colt Burgess, that's where the ejector is housed, right around the firing pin. Now, in most rifles of the era, they either had a spring-loaded ejector that was rode on the bottom of the bolt, or they, there was a stationary ejector, kind of a bar, that as the bolt retracted, it would kick that, that shell out. But Burgess and Colt, on, on just this model, designed it differently. They had a spring-loaded ejector, but it was kind of a tubular or collar type that fit around the firing pin just like that and was spring-loaded. So it acted the same way as the ejectors that were on the bottom of the bolt, but it didn't have as much uh, leverage as if it was on the bottom, so they're, they're kind of weak. Now the other problem is they're just about the exact same diameter as the um, primer in the shell. So when, when the, the round is fired, the rest of the case or the cartridge the, the base of it is against the bolt, but the primer's backing up hard into that ejector. So the, the spring, which is a, a pretty small little leaf spring, takes a lot of abuse, and a lot of times they, they got broken. And I suspect that's what we've got going on in this one. Okay, let's get this old Colt apart and see what we're dealing with. I've already taken the tang screws out, and boy, this buttstock is fit beautifully. They, the the Stock fitters in those days, both at Colt and Winchester, and probably the other manufacturers as well, just did a fabulous job. The, the fit on those that wood is incredible. If you've ever tried to fit a semi-inlet stock, you really come to appreciate uh, the artistry that, that those guys possessed and the skill level and the pride they took in their work. Okay, so we'll take out the mainspring here. The nice thing about a Colt Burgess is, is it's a, a very simple gun to take apart and put back together. Um, probably closer to working on a, a Marlin than the Winchesters. And of course, I'm a Winchester guy. I'm not bad mouth in Winchester, but some of them can be kind of aggravating to get apart. Now we'll take out the hammer screw here. And the uh, 
lever screw here is, is kind of like an 86 Winchester in a way, although it's a screw instead of a press pin, but it's got a, a bushing around it. So we'll get a little wider screwdriver here. And so we un unscrew a screw from one side and then we push the bushing out. I'll probably need a punch for that. Out the other side. Get a bigger punch. And a bigger hammer. <laughs> so here we go. Usually they don't come out quite that hard. This one probably hasn't been out in a while. Okay, now the whole bottom assembly comes out. Of course, I did this a little out of sequence. Let's put it back because we got to get the pin out between the lever and the bolt. And the bolt's really what we're after here. What well, comes right down to it because that's what houses our ejector and the spring that we think is either broken or missing. So we'll get this get lined up. And this comes apart just like most Winchesters. It's got just got a, a cover screw here. Then there's a hole on the other side that we can access to get the uh, punch into and punch it out. Let's see, got to get everything lined up just right. There we go. And there's our pin. And now the guts just fall out. Okay, so that's that's how simple it is. Now, one, one of the things that, that many people find interesting, we hear that um, the the Burgess has a toggle link design, and and it does, but it's much different than the, the Winchester toggle link design. You see, the Winchesters, we have two pretty small toggle links that, that line up end to end when, when the, uh, the gun is in battery. But here we've got one really big toggle link, and, and that's, that's it. It's a much stronger design than the earlier Winchesters. And of course, you know, Burgess had time to, to develop this. These came out 10 years after the 73s and, and, and 20 years after the, almost 20 years after the, the 66s. So this is an improved toggle link design by far. Um, unfortunately, of course, we've got this, this very odd um, ejector and here, here we can see it. Maybe we can get a little close up here of this ejector now. And it's, it's sitting almost flush with the face of the bolt and it should be sticking out. So that, and I can see the bottom of that spring is in there. So there's a spring in there. It's probably just broke. So I'll work a little bit on, on getting this spring out of here because I imagine it's going to be kind of a bugger to get out. There's a pin that goes right through here, a very tiny little pin that holds that spring in place. And we're going to have to get it out of there, and I can't even see the ends of it. Hopefully it's not peened over and kind of hammer welded into this bolt. Okay, so this little pin was at least the challenge that I thought it would be, or even more so. See, I don't think that thing's been out of there since 1884 when it was first put in, and it's a tiny little pin, only 45,000. So even a 16th inch punch is way too big for it. So I ended up taking a starter punch and turning it way down to get it started, and then ended up just taking some old uh, tiny little broken drill bits that I saved just for this kind of an occasion and finished it up and even then it gave it up hard. So this, you can see this is just a tiny, tiny little pin and uh, getting it back in will be a challenge as well. So the way this sits in here, here's this, uh, this uh, bolt that's, that's torn down here and here's the, the spring that we're looking for. Now this one's a, a reproduction that come out from Uberti. Uberti reproduced these these uh, Burgess for a while. And, and so I'm hopeful that if this spring's broken, I can use this reproduction Uberti spring. Unfortunately, they don't make them anymore. You can't get these parts from Uberti anymore. But here again is a, a bushing that I made a while back that focuses in. And there's a little groove in the bottom of that bushing or ejector. And so that, that spring, the one side of that spring, one arm of it, slides right into that little bushing like that and then it's that spring that, that loads up that bushing and acts as an ejector. Now, our Winchesters, of course, have a, a um, 
coil spring in them and I think that's a probably a better design this this design is a, a little out of date but anyway let's uh, see if maybe we can get this spring in here we can see the bottom of this spring and and so I know it's in there probably one leg is broke but we're gonna let me get my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing we're gonna try to dig that spring out of there okay there it comes and actually it's all together in one piece it looks like maybe it's kind of sprung um, if we hold it up yeah it's so so here we have let's get a focus here here we have the replacement uberti spring and the uh, original and we can see that the the original the legs aren't nearly as far apart it's not nearly as strong a spring either but that might have been just cuz it's it's been uh, under tension for 140 years so let's see well now we can see if we can get this uh, ejector bushing out of here I'll get a little closer up for that okay so here we've got this bolt out of here and we can reach in with a punch in behind and push that ejector forward but you see it just it just comes out just a little ways and it should extend further out so there's something holding that that thing back um, so we're gonna have to take it down even further now they've got a kind of an interesting mechanism here this firing pin here we can see we push it forward here it's got a little arm here that's spring loaded that's a firing pin retractor and it's held in there with the same pin that holds in the extractor here so we're going to get that pin out of there and then we're just going to take the rest of it all apart see how easy this pin will come out after 140 years oh not too bad Or I say that and then it doesn't want to come the rest of the way but we can pull our extractor out oh, okay so we should be able to now we've got a, a screw that's holding in the back of the firing pin and we'll get this firing pin out you'll see that it's kind of a unique design in its own right try to do this so that you can see it it puts it at kind of odd angles to work try to get it in front of the camera but there we go so we pull that out there's a, a leaf spring in here this this spring is rides underneath here and that's what what spring loads that firing pin retractor and there it is now this firing pin is I've mentioned is is pretty unique you can see this this big bow in it up here and that's so that we can get clearance for this toggle link design so the toggle link rides up underneath it like this so that's that's why and and you would think looking at that that those firing pins would break pretty regularly but here we'll put my hand behind it maybe you can see it a little easier but but they really don't I, I I haven't had a huge amount of these Burgess apart but I've had several and and I, I haven't come across a, a broken firing pin yet okay so now we're to the point maybe we can push this even a little further forward but no we can't okay so the next thing is is you may not be able to see it Let's see if we can focus this thing one of the problems with getting these close-ups is trying to get focused well <laughs> take my word for it there's a tiny little screw right in here right in the channel that the the extractor works in and we got to get that out that's what holds that bushing in I think that's probably going to be our next big challenge so I'm going to put a little coil in it let it soak for a while and see if we can't get that screw out we might even have to take put a little heat on it first tiny little screw okay so after a couple of days of using every trick in the book to try to get that little retaining screw out of there that's probably been in there for 140 years I finally give it up and, and took it over to the mill and, and drilled it out so we'll we'll rethread that hole and uh, make up another little retaining screw for it but now there should be nothing holding that ejector in there so let's see if we can maybe push it out from the back with this punch 
and it, it comes part way, but it's still not coming out all the way. So there's something holding it back. Let's see if maybe we can tap it out of there. Feels like it's going to go now. Yep, there it is. So here's our, our little culprit that's given us so much trouble. And I can see on the back here, hopefully I, this is such a tiny little thing and getting that camera to focus is a trick, but it's been kind of peened over in a couple of spots, one on each side. Now this, this thing is, is got a kind of a relief cut down here on the bottom and, and on each side of that, there's a, a, a little area that's got an, a ridge on it or a peened over spot. So that's what's really having, or causing some interference with it riding back and forth through that bore. So, you know, I talked about how the, the, the uh, ejector is what takes the, the force from the primer. And I, I grabbed a primer here somewhere. Here it is. And just to show that that primer is just about the same diameter as this where that rides. So all the force from that primer backing up when we fire it is taken by this little piece. And then that's pushing that back each time it's fired and peening that over a little bit. Now, it must be, yep, right here. Hopefully you can see that okay. We'll get it up here really close. And right here on the front of this toggle link, there's a little spot that's peened right here and right here. So every time this, this has been fired, we've had this piece being pushed back just kind of like this in, into it. Let's see if we can focus that better. So here, here it pops back into it, just peened that over a little bit. So we just need to clean both those surfaces up and make sure that it, it's riding freely in, in this bore here. Now if we turn it around, it should go right in and out, and it does. So if we, it's just this back part back here where it's dragging, so we just, we'll take a stone and, and clean that up a little bit, and we should be good to go put this thing back together, and <laughs> hopefully we can take it out and do some shooting. Now just to try to keep this from happening again, where this back end of this part gets peened over from firing, we're going to case harden, we're going to focus on, on the back part of it that got peened over before. We're going to infuse some carbon into it, and, and so we'll just put a, a hardened surface on it, just a few thousandths of an inch thick. And what, what we'll do is we heat it up to a, a cherry red, and then we dip it in this case hardening compound. This stuff came from Brownells. Then let it cool. And then we heat it back up again and quench it in water over here. Makes a nasty kind of a smell. That This carbon that they, they use here I think is a lot of animal bone and that's what it smells like if you've ever been around animal bone that's burned. Okay, so we'll let that cool off, reheat it again, dunk it right in the water and, and if everything's done properly, then you can take a file and skate over it and, and not cut the, the steel. All right, now it's time to heat it up again and quench. It's a little harder to see the second time whether you're getting that cherry red because we want to leave that comp compound on, get the carbon that's in that compound infused. There we go, and quench. And now we'll test it out and, and see if file skates on it, we're good. Okay, that's the sound we like. That means we got surface hardness on it. And that little bit of thin surface hardness should keep that from peening over again in the future. So it's time to put this bolt back together. And it's kind of a tricky setup. We'll set that in there, we'll get our, our spring here and push it in. I'm, I'm going to reuse the original spring, at least put it in and just see how how stout it is. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to put a little oil around that. I'll, I'll try to use 
reuse original parts whenever I can. And so that one just is pretty darn stout. So we'll go ahead and put in our little pin here. We had to make this tiny little pin. The, the one that came out was in pretty rough shape. <laughs> Try to hold this up where you might be able to see it. Get it in focus here. I mean, that is a tiny, tiny little pin. And we'll get it in here. And try to line these holes, these little tiny holes up is going to be the next trick. There we go. Now let's tap it on in. There we are. So that's how it's supposed to be. Now remember when we first first got this uh, out, it was stuck in the down position, just barely above the face. Now we can push this just a little bit beyond the bolt face. So what that tells me is if if we got primers backing out a little bit, uh, it's not a function of extra head space. It's going to be a function of that primer pushing back that ejector back into there a few thousandths and, and popping that primer out. Now I'm certainly not a fan of this ejector system on these Colt Burgess. And fortunately it was kind of a dead end. It wasn't continued that, that I know of in any other models after the Burgess. It certainly was a completely different system that came out with the lightning rifles that replaced these Burgess. But other than that, I really like the design of these. And, you know, if you compare them to like the Lightning or even some of the Winchesters, 92s, 86s, they're just really, really simple in comparison, particularly as far as assembly and disassembly. We put the bolt in here. We've got most of the rest of the internals are in one assembly that's really easy to take apart and put together. Um, and we just put the, that whole assembly in here as a unit. Kind of line everything up here. We've got a, a uh, screw that goes through a, a hollow pin and through the hammer here. And once we get it in it, everything kind of lines up. We put the uh, this big kind of bushing here that goes for the, the lever in here. Get everything kind of lined up here. And, and then we just have a little cap screw that goes on it. Get a little wider screwdriver. And that, that just holds that pin in place or bushing. And then the, the last thing to, to put the, the action together is this pin that we put in for the lever and bolt. And it usually goes in pretty doggone easy, like it did there, and then just a, a cap over the top of it. And let's get the right screwdriver head. And just that easily, we've got the action put together. Okay, let's see if this thing's gonna cycle properly. Yeah, everything seems to be working good. So, now the, the real test, after a, a whole lot of work for what seemed like a fairly simple problem with it ejecting, we're going to test this out. Keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, so... Hey, there we go. She ejects. Now it's time to put the tang screw back in and head up on the hill and do some test firing. All right, now it's time to see how this old Burgess shoots. Now this one's a pretty darn good example of a Colt Burgess. You know, they have a reputation for not having been very popular back in the day. Well, they, did, they had a very short production run. There weren't many of them out there, but typically the ones that we find are really hard used. I think the ones that got out there in circulation, their owners really liked them and they had a lot of use and abuse. You know, you can see this one has quite a lot of finish left on it. The, the barrel mag tube are turning kind of a brown, but we've got a lot of, a lot of original Colt blue on the receiver and and uh, the the 
Colt, rampant Colt stamped on the other side is, is really vivid and, and stands up good. And this one has an excellent bore, so I'm looking forward to taking a few shots with it. So let's get her loaded up and, and see how she shoots. All right, we'll get this old bird just loaded up. These things are, are, are a little awkward to load because the loading gate doesn't push in like most lever actions. It actually has slides forward up into the, uh, up under the fore end there. It's, it's much like the 81 Marlins, and of course there's a reason for that. Andrew Burgess designed both. These, these Colt Burgess have a, a, a bad habit of breaking and missing wood or cracked wood in there because it's really thin for that, that loading gate to slide up forward. Okay, we're getting there. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. I really enjoy shooting Colt Burgess. One more. Okay, so the test now. Is she going to eject consistently or not? Boy, she feeds really nicely. Oh, I don't know where that one hit. We're going to cheat that jug right up front. Right over the top of it. Let's shoot at the base of it. Hey, that's where it's it. Hey, there we go. And we're ejecting real nice. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, one more jug. Hey, there we are. And there we're empty. So it doesn't just spit them way out there, but in this case, with the the cost of brass where it is, uh, kind of a good thing they're all falling right at our feet here. But, heck, that's a good shooting old rifle right there. Okay, in the interest of full disclosure, I did go back and put that little more powerful aftermarket ejector spring in, thinking it might might get it to eject a little more powerfully, but it really didn't make much difference. These birds just, just usually don't fling them out there a long ways, but it ejects just fine and, and works real well. Now, did notice that, that we are backing the primers out just a little bit, and we kind of expected that. Remember, we, we showed where that primer comes up against that ejector rather than the bolt face, and there's a little bit of room there. So normally we'd think we'd have a headspace issue when we see that, but now you know the rest of the story. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.